Murder was the case, Mr. Mina. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so check it out, man. It's Mr. Payaso, man. But I'm gonna read off the allegations of what's, what's leveled against me. Um, so I'm gonna start from, uh, from the beginning. Really, this is the report. Just to give everybody, uh, you know, shed some light on the situation. Okay, so, on March 8th, 2023, I received a phone call from King County detectives informing me that a known United Locotes gang member named was at Mr. Bayaso's house prior to a homicide that occurred in White Center the night of March 5th, 2023. A quick note here for everyone, this is the report that probation, U.S. probation had wrote. I was informed that Tantando had a felony warrant for murder in the first degree for a homicide and officers were actively looking for him. According to the detectives, Santando is an associate of Mr. Payaso and is known to possess firearms or be around firearms. There is a YouTube video titled Flashes to Ashes posted from Mr. Payaso's YouTube page that shows Santando along with other known UL gang members. They are drinking Hennessy, flashing gang signs, and fist fighting. In addition to the above mentioned, it has been brought to my attention through local law enforcement that Mr. Bayaso is associating with known gang members and posts concerning content on social media accounts. This call is from a federal prison. On March 14, 2023, Mr. Bayaso posted a YouTube music video showing the following, titled Flashes to Ashes. The first part of the video shows Mr. Bayaso holding up a book titled The Art of War. There is a Hennessy bottle on the bed with a glass containing a dark liquor consistent with that of dark liquors such as Hennessy. Mr. Bayaso's lyrics include rapping about catching new charges, thinking about a murder after his nephew was killed, rifles and drinking alcohol. One of his lyrics says, I have my killers with bazookas in the back and my Hennessy will keep me warm and ready to attack. He speaks about trapping out the landlord's residence that he is currently residing at and having a Ruger handgun on his hip that he isn't afraid to hide. Isn't afraid to hide. The last portion of the video shows two males exit a vehicle holding rifles with flashlight mount attachments. This is more serious. On April 14, 2023, officers were flagged down by numerous witnesses to report a possible shooting on the 200 block of Pike Street. After further investigation, it was discovered that Mr. Bayaso matched the description of the suspect who shot a man, shot a man. in a nearby alleyway. Mr. Bayaso was apprehended by officers a few blocks away from the shooting location. Officers conducted a frisk on Mr. Bayaso and discovered a black and silver Smith & Wesson 40 caliber handgun in the front of his waistband. The firearm had one round loaded in the chamber and the barrel of the firearm was warm to the touch. Mr. has concerning criminal histories that includes controlled substance possessions, assaults, second degree assaults with firearms, second degree assaults with firearms, malicious mischief, criminal trespass and theft. He is actively involved in a criminal association with gang members and a negative peer group. And one young man in particular was just arrested and charged with murder and have possessed firearm. Mr. Payaso has been on supervised release. I respectfully recommend that the alleged violations be incorporated into the previous violations reports and that a warrant be issued due to community safety concerns. And it's signed by the United States probation officer and the judge and everyone else. So that's about the size of it. Like I said, I got my chest up and my head up high and I'm, 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 I'm undaunted and, and I feel like um, this is just an obstacle, you know? You know, a very huge one. I'm, I'm optimistic that um, all things clear ain't gold. You know, don't believe nothing you, you, you fucking hear and only half of what you see. So, I, that's how I was raised. Huh? Wants to get the best Beamer or the Porsche. I had to kick a couple doors. Hey. So I have some unfortunate news. Hardcore gangster rapper Money Sign Suede has been arrested for gun possession by a felon. The police caught him while he was having a meeting with Blazies. This could be an example of hip hop police. If you have a name, if you're a well-known person who is associated with a gang lifestyle, then the police will target you. They love making examples out of people. The guards were actually taking pictures of Money Sign Suede while he was detained, then they leaked it on the Instagram, and I promise that they don't do that with regular people. 
Thug at Free Speech? If you don't already know, Young Thug was arrested for alleged involvement with the YSL gang. And now prosecutors want to use these lyrics as evidence. Many say music is art. Under the First Amendment, shouldn't his art be allowed to say whatever? Well, the courts are currently debating that. The distinction between person and persona is at the core of these legal cases. At the moment, it's possible the lyrics may be admitted as evidence. Is that fair, or are they reaching for a confession that isn't there? How's it going, everybody? This is Soul Town Productions, bringing you some more content from the heart of Orange County, from one lost soul to another. Greetings. Today, we're going to be talking about the government using lyrics and rap videos to convict people, right, to convict rappers of crimes, right, that could be associated with their lyrics and their videos, right? Uh, as you can see, the first clip that was played was of Mr. Payaso, right, explaining why he was arrested, explaining his charges, right, reading down the charges, and uh, obviously it's evident that they used his lyrics and his music video to uh, give him a violation, right, to get him arrested. Now he's in federal prison. Uh, hopefully he's uh, released soon. And also you've seen the other clip of Money Sign Suede being arrested on gun charges. I'm pretty sure those gun charges were uh, were created because I'm pretty sure they've seen the videos with the guns and the gang uh, type of stilo, right? So... As you can see, the government has been doing this for a long time, right? Uh, once you become a, a key player in in a in a role model position, uh, they seem to want to take you down and bring you down, right? And uh, I mean, let's keep it real, right? Uh, showing guns, uh, sex, drugs, and violence, right? It sells uh, evil sells, right? All these things are things that people want to see. So it's understandable why people use these kind of uh, videos and they use these kind of lyrics to promote what they're doing right and uh it's evident that the government's gonna assume that you're with the activities if you're showing guns and flashing gang signs and all that stuff right so i found a very interesting article that i wanted to share with you guys that kind of highlights uh what's really been going on with the government and the the use of artistic freedoms against oneself and being used as evidence for convictions right so this article that i found online it's by uh, a company called americanbar.org it's called lyrics in la mine rap music and criminal prosecutions for those that don't know what la mine means it means in u.s law a motion in the mind is a motion discussed outside the presence of the jury to request that certain testimony be excluded. A motion in the mind can also be used to get a ruling to allow for the inclusion of evidence. The motion is decided by a judge in both civil and criminal convictions. It is by Kelly McGlynn, Jacob Schreiner Briggs, and Jacqueline Shell. In the summer of 2022, popular rap artist Young Thug and Gunna were indicted on charges of violating the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organizations Act, as well as a number of other gang, drug, and firearm-related charges. The indictment relied heavily on the artist's lyrics, using their music as evidence of guilt. In 2019, Daniel Hernandez, known for his stage name Tekashi69, face similar charges based on his lyrics prosecutors have used rap lyrics as evidence of guilt in countless cases in recent years i guess well-known stars and amateurs artists alike in 2016 for example tommy munswell kennedy was sentenced to life prison after a trial where the prosecutor's primary evidence of guilt was a song kennedy had released on the digital music platform of soundcloud Kennedy became a suspect only when the victim's father heard the song and believed it to be a confession. The rest of the evidence against Kennedy was circumstantial, and Kennedy continues to assert his innocence. What he believed when he was arrested to be a misunderstanding of his music has led to a life sentence. 
The rap lyrics are frequently used against artists in criminal trials. While there have been hundreds of cases in the past 30 years where rap songs were used to dis demonstrate guilt, there have been only a handful of analogs cases for other art forms. The reason for this are complex. Rap is an art form practiced primarily by people of color who in many cases hail from communities that are over-policed while underprotected, over-criminalized and over-incarcerated. Indeed, these harsh realities were central to the art that brought rap into the American mainstream in the 1980s. The artists and songs that rose to prominence, the music now exalted as classics of the genre, were well known for dealing openly with these social and political issues and for using depictions of violence, gangs, drugs, and police brutality to challenge the status quo. When rap artists draw on these themes, whether as an homage to the classics or from an independent creative desire to write on those topics, they are often interpreted as admitting to taking part in these scenes that de they describe. Rappers are not given the artistic leeway that artists of other genres are. There is an insidious bias that often causes audiences to believe that rap music is literal and autobiographical. And the problem is that the same bias can impact prosecutors choosing when to introduce lyrics as evidence of guilt, judges deciding when to admit it, and juries weighing whether to convict. Core First Amendment values counsel strongly against this practice. If the First Amendment stands for anything, it stands for the fundamental proposition that political and artistic speech ought to be protected against state sanction. Courts have expanded, expanded time and time again the need to ensure that speech by oppressed groups and political minorities is not chilled by government action. This is true for all artistic expressions and particularly true here, where artists in a genre that has its roots in protest and that is historically associated with the black people and other people of color are more likely to be prosecuted based on that art. As currently written, federal evidentiary rules should also prevent the admission of creative expression as a confession. Under Rule 403 of the Federal Rules of Evidence, courts may exclude evidence whose probative value is substantially outweighed by a danger of unfair prejudice. It is hard to imagine a category of evidence more deserving of exclusion under this rule. The probative value of rap lyrics is highly questionable. As in many genres, artists often write under fictional personas reference events in the news, including crimes, and enjoy lyrical hyperbole. Given the pervasive bias against rap music, jurors are even more likely to incorrectly interpret rap lyrics as literal or believe that rappers are more likely to act violently or engage in criminal activity. Thus, rap lyrics have the potential to prejudice jurors in a way that similar lyrics from songs and other genres do not. This article will discuss the constitutional and evidentiary issues that are prompted by the use of rap lyrics as evidence in criminal trials, evaluate legislative approaches to address the issue, and ultimately propose a new framework for courts to use in evaluating whether lyrics should be admissible in a criminal trial, Ultimately, while we would not argue that rap lyrics should never be introduced as evidence, we believe that the practice is deeply problematic and must be severely curtailed. The use of rap lyrics as evidence against artists is a pervasive problem that distorts the meaning and purpose of the art and creates an, an unacceptable risk of wrongful prosecutions. Since its inter inception, rap music has had an antagonistic relationship with law enforcement. The most iconic example of this is police opposition to N.W.A.'s hit song, 
F the police. The song described instances of police brutality and portrayed a mock trial in which the rappers prosecuted the police department for its actions. Law enforcement responded to the song in a variety of ways, including by attempting to prohibit the song performances and then arresting the group for defying orders not to perform it. While police argued that the song encouraged violence against officers, NWA insisted that it was not meant to be literal call to arms, but an expression of frustration with abusive policing in minority communities. A fact later borne out by the consent decree, the Los Angeles, the city of Los Angeles entered into with the into with the U.S. Department of Justice to provide federal oversight of the Los Angeles Police Department. Prosecutors have long taken the former view using rap lyrics as evidence of gang activity and violence. Though rap encompasses a multitude of subgenres and a broad diversity of artistic expression, it found its popular genesis in the 1970s and 80s as music seeking to document and protest conditions of urban life, including police brutality and mass incarceration born of the war on drugs, gang violence, and widespread urban decay and unemployment. Rap was known for its rawness, its artist brutal dis- depictions of the challenges they saw around them, and an unapologetic antagonism toward government and law enforcement, who were viewed as best as apathetic to and at worst willing cause of the problems urban communities face. Among other things, rap developed as and continues to be an important voice protesting social injustices. However, in spite of this substantial social value added by rap, or perhaps because of the subject of its criticism, it is at particular risk for being weaponized as evidence against rap artists. Rap origins and conventions caused it to be misunderstood and mischaracterized. A common theme in rap is artists portraying conditions of violence recast with the narrators. People often victimized under real world conditions occupying newfound positions of power. NWA's F the Police is a prime example of this, and the music of NWA and their contemporaries has been immeasurably influential in rap. As part of a subversive movement, rap's meaning is not always intended to be understood by a mainstream audience. Rap developed a lexicon unique to the art form that is ripe for misunderstanding by the uninitiated. For example, and of prime importance to the use of lyrics as evidence in criminal prosecution, lyrics often employ homicide metaphors. In Poetic Injustice, rap music lyrics as art life and criminal evidence, Andrea Dennis writes, Homicide serves as a frequent metaphor in rap music lyrics. In homicide metaphors, violence stands in as a symbolic explication of skill, courage, or power. That is, murder represents one's lyricist's ability to defeat or destroy another lyricist through a superior display of verbal dexterity. Reference to weapons, especially firearms, is frequently made in homicide metaphors. Weaponry metaphorically represents the microphone, the tool with which your opponent's defeat takes place. In addition to the fact that lyrics are usually not meant to be taken literally, an artist's persona is not the same as the artist himself. Rappers regularly take on characters, sometimes characters genuinely identifiable in the artist's community. But often these characters may be from other forms of popular culture, pulp fiction, and black exploitation. Common characters include the outlaw, thug, gangster, pimp, Hollywood style, mafioso, drug dealer, and hustler. Finally, as rap became widely popular, financial pressures pushed artists toward writing more violent lyrics and carrying their rap persona beyond the stage. Though the music initially found its listeners primarily in black and urban communities, it soon had a following of young white suburban listeners. This new fan base tended to prefer music that was more aggressive and abrasive. Record companies sought to profit from this by encouraging artists to cater to these tastes. 
In many cases, artists were encouraged to play up violence in their lyrics and persona with potential profit from their work. Often hanging in the balance, this means that in order to, in order for rap to serve as a viable, viable career path, artists have had to adopt a persona that differs from their own. Rap is a complex genre with conventions that put its artists at high risk of being subject to wrongful prosecution. Semitically, it often portrays violence and expresses anger and frustration at oppressive systems. The genre's greats have described violent fantasies, including those of revenge, relating to, among others, law enforcement and other rappers. Lyrically, rap encourages artists to take an alternative personas and use violent metaphors, including descriptions of murder. Culturally, artists are encouraged to bolster credibility by acting as if their art reflects their personal life rather than scenes they have witnessed or imagined together these factors create a situation where aspiring artists are likely to release songs that seem to those unfamiliar with the genre to be confessions this creates a problem within the criminal legal system prosecutors argue that rap lyrics are highly probative in many cases lyrics ostensibly amount to defendants admitting to the crimes with which they are charged while defense attorneys can use the history of conventions of rap the first amendment principles at stake and evidentiary principles guarding against unfair prejudice to argue that lyrics should not be admitted into evidence the deck is stacked against them formal legal protections do little work when the application of those protections is up to judicial discretion To be clear, there are cases in which lyrics can rightfully be introduced as evidence. The mere fact that a defendant classifies his past statements as rap is not, under the current legal regime, enough to bar their introduction. But rap lyrics are more often admitted when they should not be, and this error can and does ruin lives. Drawing the right line as to what should and what should not be permitted is difficult. To date, our legal system has not found a consistent solution. The rest of this article serves, we hope, as a step in the right direction. So, as you guys heard right there, right? The government has found loopholes and ways to use lyrics, music videos, and things like that, right? Artistic freedoms as evidence, right? And uh, it becomes easy to them, right? I mean, of course... If you're a felon and you're showing guns on camera with a bunch of dudes that look like gang members, it's going to be easy for them to prosecute you. You know, it's going to be easy for them to charge you with a crime, even though you might be innocent, even though you might put in the beginning of the video uh, weapons shown on this film are are props and so forth. Right. So even though you do all that, you try to protect yourself with the disclaimers uh, they could still use it against you. Let's say in your hometown, there's a murder that happened and you, f- for some reason, your rap lyric sounds almost like what happened at that at that court scene, right? Uh, it's going to get you in trouble. It's going to get you into a position where you might not be able to get out of it. Uh, for these reasons, you know, I-, I wanted to speak to the youngsters. The youngsters nowadays be... Uh, making music videos with the straps and the whole the whole gang scene and all that. Uh, just remember that the Rico is gonna come. Like eventually they will hit you with the Rico. Why? Because you're showing gang signs. You're showing weapons. You're showing drugs. You're showing hella money. Uh, you're getting rich off of this. And obviously the government's gonna wait until you pile up your own evidence because they they don't even have to do anything. All they gotta do is search up your name on YouTube and see all your videos with guns on them. You know. And uh, of course, it's gonna, you, you know, you're gonna, you're, you're, you're uh, how do you call it? You're, uh, uh, you're criminalizing yourself, I guess. That's how you say it, right? Uh, you're, you're making it easy for them to, to convict you of any crime that they want. You know, they could use your past against you. Uh, and, and the outcome is not always so great, right? Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, Payaso is already out of prison, but Money Science Way didn't make it out of prison on gun charges 
He was a, a felon with gun charges. He didn't make it out of prison. He got killed in the GP side. Uh, and many people said he was solid, right? So anything could happen in prison. Any misunderstanding could lead to death, you know, despair. And, uh, you know, more than likely, I just wanted to share this this topic with you guys so you guys could be a little bit more wiser, right? So you guys could be a little bit more smarter. Uh, don't talk about things that you've done on your rap lyrics, even though you want to be seen as a, as, a, as a legit dude, as a dude that that makes it happen, right? That, that makes it crack, right? Uh, even though you want to be seen as this dude, you got to remember that it does always come back to bite you in the butt. So with that being said, my people, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. It'll help me out a lot. Pretty soon we're going to be doing interviews. We're going to be going live. Uh, stay tuned and stay safe.